So the Philadelphia Eagles going on offense and a solid offensive line sparked by Trey Thomas and John Runyon there two tackles. James Thrash and Todd Pinkston are the wide receivers. Deuce Staley, the running back, and Chad Lewis, the tight end, has been the go-to guy for Donovan McNabb through the air lately. From the 22-yard line, in motion goes Lewis, and passing on the first play, and it's Thrash underneath, and a minimal gain out to the 25. For the Chicago Bears, who gave up the fewest points in the league. The strengths, Keith Trailer and Ted Washington, the free agent acquisitions paying huge dividends. Arguably, perhaps the best linebacking core in the NFL, keyed by Brian Erlacher in the middle. And an underrated secondary with McQuarters, Harris, Brown, and Parrish. Well, they just started out with an empty set, Dick. Nobody in the backfield. And McNabb completes the pass, and it's a first down for the Eagles to Freddie Mitchell, who has emerged as their number one draft pick out of UCLA. Mike Green, the nickelback, makes the tackle. Well, one of the things that these Eagles want to do is they like to come out and show a lot of different formations and a lot of different personnel packages. They started out with a two wide set and a tight end. They come back with an empty backfield set, are able to get the ball into Freddie Mitchell's hands for the first down. Two wide receivers to the left, and it's a running play. Deuce Staley, who's been doing more of receiving lately than running, picking up a couple of yards with Holdman and Daniels on the tackle. Pickup of two. And Andy Reid cannot become one-dimensional in this football game. He has to stay committed to the running game, and he said the area that he wants to attack is the outside shoulders of Ted Washington and Keith Trailer. He does not want his guys banging heads all day against those big men. Eagles winning the NFC East first time since 88. There are those two behemoths in the middle. Second down and seven. And here is Staley turning the corner off to the left side in a big game. Going out of bounds, and he may have another first down at the 44-yard line of Philadelphia. And this is what they're going to have to do to have success, is get the ball to the outside shoulders of Keith Trailer and Ted Washington. You can see right here as they step out and seal. But now the key is to get a man on Brian Erlacher. And Hank Fraley was able to get up to that second level, slow his pursuit down, and then a nice job by Freddie Mitchell on the outside. Yeah, it's important that they get Deuce Daly untracked. He has struggled somewhat in the past seven ball games, only carrying the football for a 2.6 average. He's going to have to run the ball a lot better than that today against his football team. And he lines up wide to the left. There is Staley on first down at the 44. McNabb getting away from trouble and going around Philip Daniels and picks up good yardage. So there again is where Donovan McNabb wreaks havoc with opponent, opponent defenses. He gets seven on that play. Well, and what they wanted to do, the Chicago Bears defensively, if McNabb was going to get outside contain, they wanted to force him to his left, which is exactly what they do. You got Philip Daniels chasing him down, but not until after Donovan's able to get a big game. Second down and three. Those are Donovan McNabb's rushing yards, counting for more than 75% of this offense. The Eagles in bare territory at the 49. McNabb getting time, and the pass caught by Thrash, who picks up an extra five yards to the Bear 35-yard line, where Green makes the tackle, a pickup of 14. Well, this is going to be the key thing is getting these short underneath passes completed, getting some confidence to Donovan McNabb. And right here you see just a simple hitch route by James Thrash. Yeah, and you watch the protection. One of the things when you're trying to contain a quarterback, you're not as inclined to come after him with a full rush. And so as a result on that play, Donovan had the time to sit in the pocket and deliver. Eagles mixing their plays impressively. Play action to Buckholder. And the pass going out to Correll Buckholder. And the rookie from Nebraska, who scored on a 25-yard touchdown run against Tampa Bay, picking up four. And I thought it was very interesting to hear Michael Strahan talk about how he played when he played against the Philadelphia Eagles. And, and kind of mimicking your point, Troy, you don't want to take away from your aggression worrying about where Donovan McNabb is in the pocket. You've got to play your style. And he had tremendous success when he played against the Eagles both times this season. Eight play of the drive coming up. 
And a balanced offense for Andy Reid's Eagles. Second down and six on the Bear 31. Deuce Staley breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and gets close to the sticks near the 25. And he may have a first down. Finally brought down by Brian Ur Facing an Eagle first drive that is impressive. First and 10 at the 25. Buckhalter, and again, play action. The rush on McNabb, he gets rid of it. And trying to go to the second tight end, Jeff Thomason, incomplete. And it was Warwick Holman who came storming in on McNabb. Well, they're able to get pressure up inside. Warwick Holman, you see him right there, number 53, coming unblocked. Is able to get pressure, and you can tell right there the thing that teams have had trouble doing is they've had trouble bringing McNabb down. They're getting hands on him, but yet he's still able to keep his throwing arm free to get rid of the football. And right there, he almost gets a completion. Second and ten on the 25 of the Bears. Nearly a five-minute opening drive, and the pass up the middle to Deuce Staley, and Staley gets within a yard and a half of. Another first down. It was Colvin and Erlacher in on the play, so the Eagles continue to march against this vaunted Bear defense. You see John Runyon down there at the pile at the end of that play, and one of the things that Brian Erlacher talked about was the fact that these linemen will be coming downfield trying to take a cheap shot at you when the play is finishing up. You see how long he's coming in, John Runyon. There he comes, big number 69 right there. An old saying in football, you don't want to be standing around the pile when you got guys like John Runyon on the field. Third down and two on the 17, well within the range. Of and again, nobody in the backfield, Dick. And five men go out as receivers, and this pass dropped. It was Mitchell and Chad Lewis were both within a yard and a half of each. So the Bears would go on offense for the first time and the only team in the league that had these five starters intact for the entire year. Olin Krutz and Big Cat Williams headed for the Pro Bowl. Rex Tucker with an injured calf is starting. Stanley Pritchett, the former Eagle, will be at fullback as Damon Shelton has been suspended for four games. Marty Booker and Des White, the wide receivers, and Anthony Thomas, the rookie. Who had a big year and Miller going to the air and it's deflected and nearly intercepted. David Terrell up the middle on a short pass and Jeremiah Trotter trying to pick it off for the Eagles couldn't hold on. Defensively for the Philadelphia Eagles, Douglas Grassmanis, the former Bear, and with Hollis Thomas out, their best run defender, Grassmanis is in at tackle. Caldwell, Trotter, and Carlos Emmons, the linebackers, outstanding secondary, led by Troy Vincent, Brian Dawkins, also the free safety, with Damon Moore, who had two interceptions last week against Tampa Bay. Miller gets sacked inside the 20 by Richard Cook. So they come from everywhere and everyone. Well, that, that's going to be the key in how this Chicago Bear offense handles the pressure. And on that situation right there, Rashad Cook is going to come from the right side of your screen. Now, this is a running formation. And when the Chicago Bears go into a running formation, their two tight end package, he is going to counter with Rashad Cook, a third safety on the football field. And Jim Johnson will rarely run the same blitz twice in a game. Loss of seven on the play. Bears worst in the NFL. Under 30% in their last eight games, and they need 17 yards. Miller going back to the 10-yard line and passes, and it's caught by Marty Booker, but short of the first down by three yards. Donovan McNabb, five for seven on that opening drive. The ball is at the 32-yard line, and the handoff to Deuce Staley. And the Bears, who are outstanding against the run, limit Staley to a gain of only one. <laughs> John Runyon <laughs> finishing another block. He has been the most active lineman so far in this game. The right tackle for Philadelphia. Well, you know, this is just going to be one of those types of games with the guys on the inside, you know, on the offensive and defensive line. It's, uh, you know, that's the bear strength. And, and he takes his guy out and comes back in and going for a little bit more. So you better get used to that because that's the style of John Runyon. Second down and nine at the 33. Former Tennessee Titan. 
McNabb getting a lot of time can pick his spots and his pass up the middle intended for Staley is incomplete. And now some shoving going on between Brian Erlacher and Deuce Staley. And I expect the guys will see a lot of that today. Well, we'll see a lot of that. And Donovan missed him one here. He had an opportunity for Freddie Mitchell up the seam. You're going to watch him right here, Freddie Mitchell. He's working straight up the seam versus a cover three defense, meaning safety in the middle of the field. And as you can see, he's got all that area right there to throw the football. And you're not going to get a guy more open in this league than what Freddie Mitchell was able to right here. And Donovan just was unable to see him. Third down and nine. Again, McNabb with time, but he's hit from behind. Still on his feet, ad libs, and finds an open receiver, James Thrash, who puts on the burgers down on the sideline and is knocked out of bounds. So again, Donovan McNabb with his elusive ability and his strength befuddling defenses and a gain of 43 yards with Parrish finally bringing Thrash down. Well that'll absolutely demoralize a defensive football team. They've got him contained right there. Roosevelt Colvin had an opportunity on him and then they get him going back to his left and he fires it to Thrash and finds him and what should have been a loss winds up being a big gain. So the Eagles are at the 24 yard line of the Bears and you know if they have to settle for three those add up the Eagles already over 100 yards at the 24 Corral Buckhalter testing the middle of the line and picking up nearly three Joe Tafoya in on the play undrafted rookie from Arizona bringing up second down and long so the Eagles have effectively silenced this uh, throng coming here to cheer the Bears with five and a half minutes to go and totally dominating the, the ball. Well they did a nice job in their first series getting the ball down in position to get a field goal. They've done another good job here moving the football. That's the way you get a crowd out of a game. Second and eight and swinging out is Buckhalter. Carell Buckhalter knocked out of bounds but the Eagles will pick up another first down at the 13 yard line. Harris on the play. And Buckhalter has been getting a lot of play late in the season for Philadelphia. Well, Andy Reid wants to keep both of his running backs fresh, so you will see Carell Buckholder, you will see Deuce Staley uh, back and forth throughout the course of the game. And, and on that situation right there, they had Carell split out to the right side and kind of a wing set. They brought the blitz to the Philadelphia Eagle left side, so a good play call in that situation. Carell was able to get open immediately in the flat. And it had been a long drought since the Eagles managed a rushing touchdown, which Buckhalter. Achieved last week against Tampa Bay. First down and 10 at the 13. And the pass out to Deuce Staley. And coming up to make the play impressively is R.W. McQuarters. So McQuarters making a play on Staley and the Eagles lose a yard on the play. Well, what the Eagles like to do is they like to get the ball into Deuce Staley's hands. And it doesn't always mean running the football. They throw the screen pass and they throw the swing passes to him like they did right there. And they equate that as, as a running play. You're going to have a hard time completing that, that swing pass and outflanking this defensive football team for the Chicago Bears. They have great speed with their linebackers running sideline to sideline. So they should cover those uh, outside plays, second and 11, and the pass overthrown intended for the fullback Cecil Martin, and that'll bring up third down. And uh, guys, I think we both got the impression the Bears in their first playoff game may be a little more tentative in talking with them as opposed to the Eagles who are in their fourth playoff game and seem to have a head of steam going for them. Well I think so I think you look at the Eagles they had an opportunity to play last week in the wild card game they got some of the playoff jitters out of themselves in that game right now the Bears just have to try to relax this is a big game for a lot of guys who don't have a lot of playoff experience. Huge edge in this first quarter in ball control third down and 11 and the pass Caught by Thrash at the five, short of the first down by two yards. And now the Chicagoans start from the 34 yard line. Jim Miller, the quarterback. Three receivers line up to the right, the handoff to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas will be stopped for no gain and maybe a loss by Paul Grassmanis, the former Chicago Bears. Well, tomorrow the NFL postseason continues on Fox, the NFC Divisional Playoff, two of the NFL's best quarterbacks. Kurt Warner 
And Brett Favre, what a shootout that's going to be tomorrow. Well, that's going to be a great game. You get a chance in the playoffs to match the two best quarterbacks in the game. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. Second down and 10 at the 34 yard line. Jim Miller operating out of the shotgun and the pass underneath to Marty Booker, who caught 100 passes. First Chicago Bear to do so, picking up four yards, and the middle linebacker Jeremiah Trotter brings him down at the 38. And he's going to be key to this Philadelphia Eagles defense, not only in the run game, but also in the passing game, because this Bears offensive football team likes to throw the short crossing patterns in front to try and confuse coverage. So Jeremiah Trotter and the other linebackers will have to do a good job of passing those receivers off. Ahmad Merritt, who is signed off the practice squad, Prior to the last couple of games of the year, lines up three receivers, third down and six at the 38, and the quick pass out to Des White. And White is stopped short about a yard and a half from the first down, forcing the Bears to kick field, but the Eagles were seven and one on the road this season. From the 42-yard line, bursting up the middle, Anthony Thomas. And Thomas picking up five. Emmons on the stop. Defensive coordinator Jim Johnson talking about Anthony Thomas that he is going to be the best running back that they have faced all season. He takes away Marshall Falk because he says he's in a class by himself. But he says he's a great downhill runner, tremendous strength, and he will get stronger as the game goes on. And this Chicago offense loves to feature him and wear down their opponent in the second half. Bears could not find a running back for years including high draft picks and they found one to Thomas second down and five Thomas right tackle and stopped a yard short of the first down the Bears but they only needed a yard that time so they're on the 31 yard line of the Eagles Anthony Thomas back in and gets the pitch up the middle Thomas with good strength great balance picking up about five yards on first down well, usually you see the bunch, you've got wide receivers, but you look at this group right there, those are tight ends and fullbacks. And that has got to be a key for the defense to know that there's a big counter coming out the backside. One of the plays that the Chicago Bears love to feature in their run game. Yeah, and the other thing is they ran at Hugh Douglas and Paul Graz Manis, and that's an area where they feel like they can have some success. They feel like the size of Blake Brockermeyer and Rex Tucker outweighs those smaller defensive linemen. Second and five, and this time Thomas is uh, tripped up. And will pick up only one yard on the play. So the Eagles uh, close down the run. They're missing Hollis Thomas, who uh, suffered a broken foot running out for introductions against the Giants in the next to last game of the season. And here's where the mismatch that we've been talking about comes up. You look at the size of the offensive lineman of the Bears versus the defensive front of the Eagles, and, and it's almost 20 pounds and two inches per man. So that will take its toll as this game goes on, and we'll see how these, these Eagles are able to stand up late in the game. Third down and four at the 25. The design rollout by Miller going for Des White in a woefully underthrown pass is intercepted by Damon Moore. Damon Moore, who picked off two. He blocked Jim Miller and took him to the ground. Eagles on the 20-yard line get it back, leading six to nothing. And Donovan McNabb with the short drop drills it. And that pass caught at the 30 by Chad Lewis. Maybe just short of the first down by a yard as they tend to Jim Miller on the bench. Well, Chad Lewis, he has really gotten involved in this offense, especially over the last two ball games, but more over the last five to six and the first half of the season he wasn't being utilized as much the last few games he's gotten 11 receptions he's become more of a focal point within this offense and it's really helped with the completion percentages for Donovan McNabb second down and one and here's Deuce Staley on the carry and Staley driven back by Philip Daniels and again it appears that uh, the Eagles are denied the first down and that will bring up third down and less than a yard. So the crowd now urging on the Bears defense as Jim Miller leaving the field. Shane Matthews, who started the season as the quarterback for the Chicago Bears in their opener against Baltimore before he got hurt in game two, starts to warm up. Third down and one. McNabb's pass. 
And it is caught. First down, James Thrash. Talk about go to guys down the stretch of the season. Thrash has been a big target, gets only three, enough for the first down. James Thrash, yeah, he's been a been a big part of this offense. And you see Jim Miller coming up into the tunnel. That's not good for Bears fans. The one thing about it, though, is that Shane Matthews has had an opportunity to play in some games this year, and he's won for this football team. So the football team has confidence that when he steps in, that they can still play at the level that they're accustomed to playing. From the 33 yard line, here's Staley off the left side. Now cutting up field, and Deuce Staley with an impressive run close to another first down. Ted Washington making the tackle, but a at least a nine yard pickup for Staley who has 27 yards on six carries well, one of the keys for the Bears defense today was going to be tackling and right now to this point they have not tackled well they've had opportunities to get people down on the ground for short gains and do Staley is one of the guys you have got to put a helmet on him he is a big physical runner you see him right there running through Ted Washington as he's pursuing down the line second down and one at the 42. And the Bears showing blitz and the handoff to Staley. Staley's driven back to the 40 by Roosevelt Colvin. And right now, let's check in with Pam Oliver. All right, uh, Dick, here's the update on Jim Miller. He has a separated right shoulder. You saw him going into the locker room there. His return is questionable. McNam stepping back, getting time again, and his pass incomplete. Cecil Martin, the fullback, the intended receiver, and that ball bounced five yards up the middle. So the Bears hold again, and when they get the ball back, we will see a new Chicago quarter. Matthews, who engineered the two dramatic overtime victories against San Francisco and Cleveland, handing off to Anthony Thomas on the pitch. Thomas going left, and uh, Thomas picking up seven yards on first down. Well, Shane Matthews, he, he entered this season a lot of people probably don't remember but he entered this season as the starting quarterback for this team. He, get, he got hurt in week two against Minnesota with a rib injury and that's when Jim Miller came in. But he's also gotten to play during the season. He had the two dramatic comebacks against the San Francisco 49ers as well as the Cleveland Browns. And so he is not a guy who has not seen game action. He'll continue to do the same things offensively as what they had projected to do with Jim Miller at quarterback. Second down and four at the 37. Here's Anthony Thomas. Stopped two yards shy of the first down. Well, Sunday, February 3rd, tune in to Blockbuster's 19th annual All Madden show to find out who makes football's most prestigious team. Plus, see this year's Hershey's Million Dollar Kick, where one lucky contestant will have the chance to win $1 million in front of a live audience. Blockbuster's 19th annual All Madden show begins at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific, February 3rd on Fox. Another aspect of Shane Matthews' season is that he was actually released for about three days in the middle of October for roster moves and then re-signed. Now third and two, and the handoff on the semi-pitch and stopped before the first down sticks is Anthony Thomas. Responding with his great crowd at Soldier Field. Eagles begin from the six yard line. Deuce Staley going wide, driven back. And that was Tony Parrish. Strong safety and a loss of a yard. And Jim Miller walking back onto the field. And the crowd cheering Jim Miller's return. You know, he really is the people's choice. They had three quarterbacks, Cade McNown, the highly touted rookie, Shane Matthews and Miller, and the crowd, the fans here always like Miller. Well, there's no question about it. He's the perfect quarterback for this city. They appreciate the blue-collar work ethic that he brings to this club. And when you talk about the Chicago Bears, rarely do you mention Jim Miller as being a focal point of this football team, but he has all the intangibles. The crowd's glad to have him back out on the field. Remember, the report was he had a separated shoulder. Second and 11, McNabb pumps incomplete as the ball bounces in front of Cecil Martin. Right now, let's get a report from Pam Oliver. All right, Dick, you saw Jim Miller coming back out of the locker room. He was in there for about 15 or 20 minutes. His wife even came down into the tunnel area to try to get an update. He miraculously has recovered from that separated shoulder, apparently, or they've treated him well enough <laughs> to the point he's going to try to get back in this game. Third and 11, back 
back in his end zone is McNabb. He eludes Daniels. Chased by Erlacher, and Erlacher brings him down. Stays inbounds at the 13-yard line, and that will bring up fourth down. And so the momentum changing on two notes, the Bears defense and then Jim Miller coming out of the runway back to the bench. Well, here's Brian Erlacher at the start. Just watch him on this play. This is amazing. He misses the traffic underneath. Look at how far away he is from Donovan McNabb at that point. There is the speed and the athleticism, the ability to quarterback for the Bears. Although Miller is back on the bench, play action from the 38. And this pass should have been intercepted, it appeared, by Carlos Evans. And a flag is down. It was Mike Caldwell who went after Shane Matthews. Remember, we've already had a personal foul call against the Eagles. And now we're going to have a roughing the passer penalty. Well, they got Mike Caldwell coming in, and, and I don't see what he did wrong there at all. You saw he was trying to pull up. Roughing the passer, continue to drive him into the ground. 56, 15 yard penalty, first down. He didn't drive him there. You can see him pulling up a little bit. Now, there was no drive into the ground whatsoever, and that's just a bad call. And the, I actually thought they were throwing the flag for intentional grounding. There was no receiver in the area of where Shane Matthews threw that one and he in fact, in fact he was fortunate that it was not intercepted because he never got outside the tackle box. I, I thought the same thing Troy. I thought that that was going to be intentional grounding well, on Shane Matthews. Well Evans number 51 was the only player in the neighborhood and he could not make the interception. There's Jim Miller. See whether he gets back in eventually. Bears have not done much and on the end around Armand Merritt. Merritt with great speed and Merritt breaks one. One man to beat and that's Troy Vincent. Activated from the practice squad, former University of Wisconsin receiver on this end around. Well, I tell you what, this is a play that a lot of teams have had success with against this Eagles defense. Their aggressiveness and their pursuit to the ball leaves them susceptible to misdirections and gadget plays. Offensive coordinator John Shoup. Well, the guy that you would least expect is Ahmad Merritt, who just got picked up off the practice squad. A very fast player, great toughness. He gets an opportunity in a playoff game to run the reverse and you can see Fred Baxter out leading the way and Ahmad Merritt does a great job of following his blockers staying to the outside away from pursuit and gets into the end zone. Well you had a great job by Olin Krutz turning back on Mike Caldwell and then as you pointed out Fred Baxter down the field but Ahmad Merritt made Bobby Taylor miss in space and to have a run like that eventually at some point the ball carrier must make an unblocked guy miss the tackle and that's exactly what Ahmad Merritt. Eagles with a first down at the 31 yard line and a play action pass McNabb it's tipped and it falls incomplete. Roosevelt Colvin got a hand on that one. Well, Olin Cruz had a key block to spring Ahmad Merritt, and then he finishes up by coming over and letting Hugh Douglas know about what he did to Jim Miller, the quarterback. So this is going to be a tremendous battle the rest of the day. Those offensive linemen, there's James Big Cat Williams coming in. They, they know that Hugh Douglas was responsible for that injury. They're going to be on him the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, and if anybody's going to get in the middle of a tango like that, it's going to be Olin Cruz. He, he looks forward to those. And there, as uh, Moose mentioned, first touchdown allowed in the last 41 quarters. Here is McNabb getting away from the rush. Escapes another defender and runs for the first down. And you know, when, Amon, when Donovan McNabb... Before the 30-second clock runs down. First and 15, Deuce Staley off the right side. And then Staley picking up about four on the play. Brian Erlacher. Making the stop for the Eagles. We expected a close game, and we have it, a tight game, and we have that as well, a one point affair. Keith Trailer right there. You know, you, you talk a lot about he and Ted Washington clogging up the middle, but they do a great job of getting down the line of scrimmage also. Those are two big guys, but let me tell you what, they pursue so well down the line of scrimmage to the ball carrier. They're not just in there to clog that middle up. How about Trailer with a 67 yard run after the interception against Jacksonville? Underneath to Deuce Staley, 
Deuce Staley close to the first down at the 45 of the Bears. So it's the Eagles talking up the penalties. Bears yet to commit one. Back to midfield, first and 15. Deuce Staley off the left side, and Staley picking up about nine yards. McQuarters and Carl Powell, a backup defensive end, in on the play. So they get some of that back. That was a nice design play, getting Chad Lewis out there in motion and that quick toss, getting onto the perimeter very quickly. James Thrash now doing a nice job coming down inside and getting a hit on Brian Erlocker. So a lot of different ways they're trying to get him uh, taken away from that second level so he can't pursue. Eagles still have the ball control edge, two to one in plays. Second and eight on the 43 of Chicago. McNabb's pass is caught by Mitchell, but hit immediately. And down three yards short of the first down by Warwick Holt. Pitch going to Buckhalter, and Buckhalter trying to get the yardage will be knocked back. He doesn't get there as R.W. McQuarters leading the charge. And fourth down coming up. Eagles shy by about a yard. Well, watch John Runyon right here, the right tackle. He gets pushed back into the backfield by Roosevelt Colvin, which forces Correll Buckhalter to go wide and not get going downhill to try to pick up the first down. And now they will go for it on fourth down and one. At the 36 yard line of the Bears. And here's McNabb. And he flips the ball, and it is caught by Jeff Thomason in a first down at the 27-yard line. So the fourth and one rollout, and Jeff Thomason, the former Packer who played in Green Bay when Andy Reid coached there, and the Eagles move the sticks. Well, sometimes the toughest pass to make is when you got a guy wide open. He has Jeff Thomason right there. Almost puts a little too much air under that one, but Jeff Thomason is able to pull it in. Nice catch. 40 seconds and no timeouts left for the Eagles on the 27 yard line and this pass and they rule it a catch inside the 15 yard line by Chad second down and 10 at the 13 yard line in motion is James Thrash and here is McNabb stutter stepping his way in the pocket and now he fires and all alone sitting in the end zone for a touchdown is Cecil Martin the fullback. So it's Shane Matthews in relief of Jim Miller. First down at the 29 with an empty backfield. Completes or incompleted pass to Baxter. First time they have gone to the tight end. Well, other than the end around run by Ahmad Merritt, 47 yards, only 41 other yards for the Bears today as they line up no huddle on second and 10. And the pass underneath on the crossing pattern. And that is a, a reception. Des White making the catch, but a minimal gain, bringing up third and long. That was Jeremiah Trotter. Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to change the tempo of the game here and get things going a little bit more offensively. They, John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, has a tendency to try to go to the no huddle to change things up. They've been a little bit sluggish there in the first half. And Des White coming out, he was inactive in the last two regular season games with a hamstring pull. And that's one of the things that I'm surprised hasn't happened more this year with these Chicago Bear wide receivers because they come across the middle six, seven, eight times a game. And you're going in, and Jeremiah Trotter just put a big hit on Des White right there. Yeah, and Jeremiah Trotter and the rest of those linebackers told us yesterday they were going to be looking him up, and they certainly were there. Dwayne Bates lining up to the right, replacing Des White on third down and eight. And here is the pass. It's incomplete. Another crossing pattern. Booker, the intended receiver. Playing hard nosed football are the Eagles. Well, you see Big Cat Williams there, number 71, trying to get this offense going. He's talking to the troops, and he's the, the elder statesman of this crew and made his first Pro Bowl this season and trying to do everything that he can to get this team motivated and playing at the level that they know that they can play. Only player on the roster the last time the Bears made the playoffs back in 94. 
So the Eagles with a 13 to 7 lead and a first down on the 28 yard line and McNabb going outside to Cecil Martin who caught the touchdown pass prior to the end of the half and a gain of six yards. So it's been a banner year for the Eagles first division title in 13 years. They allowed the second fewest points to the NFL only five more than the Bears and a seven and one road record their only loss against the San Francisco 49ers and so uh, this team knows how to play on the road now they got playoff experience now they have things going their way second down and five at the 33 yard line Deuce Staley cutting up the middle and Staley will be halted two yards shy of the first down by Keith trailer that's Mike Brown under the towel just two interceptions in back-to-back -back games sparked the much talked about overtime comebacks by the Bears and their two big tackles trailer and Washington go out third and two there's Mike Green who replaced Mike Brown Staley will go in motion and McNabb's pass tipped, and it's intercepted and it's Jerry Azuma, and he's going to go in. So just when you're ready to say the Bears may be hibernating for the rest of the year, they make a big play. And it was a defensive touchdown, their sixth of the year. Well, you take a look, Donovan McNabb trying to get the ball in there. R.W. McCorders looked like he might have gotten a hand on it, and then Jerry Azuma there for the deflection. And this is a defense that has been living off the turnover all season long and taking advantage of the opportunities they've had. 38-yard return by Jerry Azuma. But the Eagles uh, self-destructing on penalties at the holding call puts the ball back in Philadelphia territory first down and 20 McNabb and his pass incomplete going to Chad Lewis and let's send it down to Pam Oliver she's busy today all right Dick an update on this Bears rash of injuries receiver Marty Booker has a separated right shoulder he is being evaluated Des White is said to be fine Mike Brown a mild concussion temporarily out he may return though today back to you a laundry list of injuries as you look at Mike Brown and Booker with the separated shoulder Brown wants to get back in there and the good thing about that is that you see that Mike Brown does not have his helmet with him they will take your helmet away from you when you have a concussion so you can't get back on the field James thrash in the backfield and the play fake to him McNabb looking for running room or a passing lane and he drops the pass Todd Pinkston was open at the 35 yard line and it came right out of his hands. Well on the play right before that Dick Donovan McNabb had a shot at Chad Lewis and did not deliver him the football here. Donovan has Todd Pinkston the throws a little bit behind him, but that's a play right there that Todd Pinkston has got to be able to make it hits him right in the hands and he picks up the first down there if he comes down with it those are the plays that make a difference. Third and 20. On the Eagle 41. McNabb up the middle completes to Staley tackled shy of midfield and the Eagles will have to punt back and there's going to be some problems. Well it's been a problem the four star penalties but that was the first penalty on the Bears today. Anthony Thomas not much there. Super Bowl Sunday is just two weeks away. Catch you two performing live on the E Trade Super Bowl 36 halftime show. Right here on Fox. It was a bit better than that, Dick. You get to see the, the Super Bowl and you two at the same, oh, <laughs> the same venue. Pretty good uh, attraction is they had in Chicago today. Michael Jordan leading the Washington Wizards against his former team, Chicago Bulls. He's home warm watching this one. Second down and 13, back to the nine yard line. Bears trying to improve bad field position, but they keep it on the ground, and Anthony Thomas. Tackled from behind by Carlos Emmons. One yard pickup 
So it'll be third and long, and that has not been a good sign for the Bears today. In this defense, you know, one of the one of the matchups that I think everybody was concerned about from a Philadelphia standpoint was how is their front seven going to handle this big physical offensive line of the Bears, and, and they've done a very nice job this afternoon. And uh, you know, I think they're just carrying over from what they did last week in the playoff game against Tampa Bay. They're making an equipment adjustment as the Bears get to the line of the Eagles. Third down and 12. Dane Matthews not known for his deep passing. And that one is another not deep pass. Anthony Thomas trying to break a tackle. And Thomas close to the first down. Brian Dawkins will bring him down. And they had to get to the 22 yard line. And it uh, appears. Close in their second drive here in this half in Chicago territory there at the 36 pitch to Corral Buckhalter off the left side and Buckhalter picks up two yards with McQuarters making the tackle a shootout Favre and Warner Packers and Rams tomorrow on Fox should be a beauty guys well it really should and I think if you look at the team that really matches up the best against this St. Louis Rams football team it would be the Green Bay Packers. This should be an outstanding football game. And Kurt Warner's voice uh, appeared back to normal, although it was a quiet practice yesterday. Second down and eight at the 34. Here's McNabb getting pressure, and McNabb is going to go down. The Bears finally get to him. Jerry Azuma with help from Wal Harris. So Azuma has become a standout. As a non starter defensively for the Bears, their first sack of the game. Watch what Donovan McNabb does at the end of this play, though. He's trying to scramble, he's trying to make something happen. When he realizes he can't, he gets both hands on the football and protects it. He does not allow the Bears to strip him because of the great field position they have right now. They still have a chance for points. Yeah, and what you got is Walt Harris coming off the side, and the Bears were able to get pressure up the middle, which kept Donovan from being able to break contain. A loss of six yards. And now McNabb again with time. Got to watch the running lanes, but he has an open receiver, and it's Jeff Thomason. Thomason with a first down for the Eagles at the 10 yard line. Tom McMillan brings him down, so that's two big plays for Thomason in this game. Well, it's big plays uh, today by the tight ends, Chad Lewis and Thomason. And you see Thomason originally, he was blocking, and then he releases. That's why he's able to get open. Donovan again doing a great job of finding the open receivers always looking to throw the football Thomason gets off the blocker and gets up inside for completion. He only caught two passes or five passes in the regular season two in this game and the fake end around and Deuce Staley charges it inside the whistle did not blow and so Staley gets another three or four yards before he is tackled at the six by Mike Green who remains in there for Mike Brown and Keith Trailer. good persistence by Staley. Well, I'll tell you what both do Staley and Corral Buckhalter this is the way that they run the football they don't ever quit until they're down and they just keep going and keeping their legs turning and pick up some extra yards. Both had really really physical runs last week. Uh, Deuce Staley's a catch and run for their touchdown. So yeah you, you better make sure that either the whistle has blown or they are on the ground. Staley lines up to the top and the pass touchdown. Deuce Staley and no one had him. Bears twice have been three and out here in the second half. Been a defensive touchdown that gave him the lead momentarily as Anthony Thomas going off the left side, picking up five yards on the play. We have had four lead changes in this game. The Eagles leading by six, and the six points would have to be those early field goals by David Akers in the first quarter. Winner of this game will face the survivor of tomorrow's. Rams Packers game on Fox in the NFC Championship game next Sunday. The loser, Feeney. Thomas to the 45 yard line, still short of a first down by a yard. Well, the Bears are sticking with their game plan on, on what they want to do. They're going to still try to hammer Anthony Thomas up inside and stick with it. No reason for him not to. They're down six points still with midway through the third quarter. And they know that ultimately 
that they need to be able to run the football. They don't want to get into a situation where they have to throw the ball every down against this tremendous secondary of the Philadelphia Eagles. Jimmy Herndon, a tackle number 74, reports as a tight end. There you see him lined up to the right. And the handoff and a first down, Leon Johnson that time. So getting close to midfield are the Bears, who have not managed much of an offense today. One big play on offense, one big play on defense, as they trail by six, and we wind down to four minutes remaining in the third. Well, this is the point in a football game where that size advantage of the Bears' offensive line can start to pay some dividends. They've been pounding at this Eagles' defensive front for over half the game now as we get down towards the end of the third quarter. Des White on the pitch, and the wide receiver. So a little more razzle-dazzle by the Bears and a pickup that time of 15 yards and a first down. Evans downfield as the Bears get to the 41 of Philadelphia or make it to 37. Number 81, Ahmad Merrick coming inside, getting a good block on Rashad Cook. Maybe got away with a little bit of a hold there, but he's having a nice afternoon today. A guy that was elevated from the practice squad late in the year. Jim Miller who got cheers when he came out separated a separated right shoulder has not come back in the game it's been Shane Matthews and now the handoff and a loss on the play Anthony Thomas is driven back by a host of Eagles led by Brandon Whiting nice play by Brandon Whiting there getting penetration it was a slow developing run play he was able to get penetration in the backfield was actually waiting for Anthony Thomas when he took the handoff from Shane Matthews Bears in a second and long, second and 12 on the 39 yard line. Line up with two wide receivers on the left and Baxter, the tight end, in motion. Now Thomas goes and there's a wide receiver screen and it's Des White. And Des White close to the first down. This time to the other side. Jeremiah Trotter, the middle linebacker, on the tackle. You know, we talked to the Eagles, and the one thing they talked about yesterday that they had to be able to defense was the bubble screen. You see here, 86, Marty Booker putting the block, and then Des White getting up inside. And everything that the Bears do as far as formations, they run that bubble screen, and it creates some real problems for a defense. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the Philadelphia Eagles have not played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. It's very susceptible defense to that play, but they got a big game there in a third and short situation. Third and one. Leon Johnson is the back, and Johnson will have the first down. His feet churning. Leon Johnson signed in October, gets the first down for the Bears on the Philadelphia 26. You know, the one thing the Bears have been able to do is they've been able to answer the scores of the Philadelphia Eagles. They go down and they score points, and the Bears bounce right back. They're showing the resiliency that is that really they've had all season long that has gotten them into this divisional game, and they're doing a nice job of rebounding each and every time Philadelphia does something. Marty Booker split to the left. First down on the 26 play action for Matthews. He completes it to Baxter a minimal gain to the Bears tight end. He'll get three on the play and Jeremiah Trotter. He's been all over the field today covering the big tight end. Well that was one of the plays that John Shoup the offensive coordinator had set up to take a shot down the field. He had Marty Booker one on one on a deep post but good coverage by the Philadelphia Eagles for Shane Matthews to drop that ball down to his uh, to his safety valve. And there's a look at John Shoup and the thing that he wanted to do in this ball game is he wanted to make sure that the Eagles knew that they were playing offense and they didn't want the Eagles dictating the tempo to this offensive group of the Bears. Second and seven and here is Anthony Thomas trying to go wide trying to get around Douglas he does but not Dawkins and no gain on the free. James Allen into the game for the first time in the backfield and out of the shotgun and the flip going to Allen Allen turning the corner and he is tackled at the 20 yard line after a three yard pickup game and a first down at the 33 yard line and there is a pass 
intended for thrash downfield and covered by R.W. McQuarters. We'll get complete playoff and Super Bowl coverage at the official source, SuperBowl.com, or America Online, keyword SuperBowl.com. So Mike Brown, who suffered a concussion, back in there at free safety. Everyone but Jim Miller has come back in the lineup after they were knocked out. Second and ten for McNair. Goes to plan B, and it's to Staley, and pushed out of bounds by Erlacher. Staley gets it up to the 41-yard line and a gain of eight. And this Bears secondary really doing a pretty good job of staying with these wide receivers. When you've got a quarterback like Donovan McNabb who's able to buy time, these corners and safeties have to stay with their guys that much longer, and they're doing a nice job right there. They had him picked up, and Donovan had to throw the swing pass. And another big third down coming up. Eagles need two. McNabb with a pump fake. And looking to run, and he will. He'll get the first down as he walks out of bounds at the 49-yard line. So the legs do it for Donovan McNabb, and the Eagles keep possession. A nice job of the Eagles picking up the blitz. Brian Urlacher will pull out. You'll see the two safeties come in. Deuce Staley picks up the second one. Donovan has plenty of time. But sees that opening to the right side, and he takes advantage of it with enough yards for the first down. Eagles on their own 49-yard line. McNabb has gained 44 yards rushing on five attempts. And off to Staley. And Staley gets two yards into Bear territory. Last time the Philadelphia Eagles reached the NFC Championship game was back in 1981, the year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Oakland Raiders. They defeated the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC title game. They're trying to get there again. Second down and eight. <clears throat> Big edge in yardage for the Philadelphia offense. McNabb. And the pass caught for the first down at the 40 by Chad Lewis. How valuable has Lewis been down the stretch for the Eagles, including last week's wild card game? Well, he's just given Donovan tremendous confidence. Watch here, Donovan McNabb. Roosevelt Colvin reads it perfectly. Donovan does a great job of making Colvin get off his feet, which then creates a lane. Here's Chad Lewis just dragging across. Donovan finding him, but you're right. Chad Lewis has been able to be the sure-handed guy here towards the end of the season and has become somewhat of a security blanket, much like he was last year for Donovan McNabb. On first down, Jamie Reeder, the fullback, on his first carry of the game, and Mike Brown with his first real hit. Brown and Tafoya combined to make the stop, a loss of one for the Eagles. They're on the Bear 41-yard line early in the fourth quarter with the Eagles leading by three. Greg Blosh, defensive coordinator, who's uh, thought that this week, play football like you did when you were six years old. Just go out and play reckless Well, ball. he wanted to keep his players loose and relaxed coming into this game and just play football on your right. And Don McNabb escaping the way he is has got to be driving him crazy. <laughs> Second and 11, quick toss to Pinkston. And Pinkston picks up another eagle first down. First reception of the game for Todd Pinkston with Mike Brown on the coverage. Well, you can see Brian Erlocker talking to him. Here's Todd Pinkston. There goes the coverage in on the blitz. And that's just a nice adjustment and a nice contact eye to eye with Todd, Pink Todd Pinkston and Donovan McNabb. Yeah, and what happened was they brought the blitz, as you mentioned, and they didn't, they didn't account for anybody covering Todd Pinkston. A real mess up there by the Chicago Bear defense. And that's a rarity. They don't normally mess up. First down on the 28th. Play action and the pass thrown underneath to Cecil Martin and Martin driven back and they'll call the forward practice progress practically back at the line of scrimmage with Erlacher and the strong safety Tony Parrish. Well, this is a great job by Erlacher because this is a misdirection boot with Cecil Martin coming out. You can see he's got a step on him, but again, the closing speed 
that Brian Urlacher has to get to the ball is, is the, probably the most impressive thing about his ability at middle linebacker. Nine tackles today for Brian Urlacher. He was the defensive rookie of the year last year in the league. And there is McNabb taking a shot. And this play is caught by Todd. No, incomplete. Todd Pinkston could not hold on. Tell you what, they got the one on one matchup that you always like to see. And Donovan threw about as good a ball as you can throw in that situation, giving Todd Pinkston an opportunity. As we take a look, Todd Pinkston's got a step on Walt Harris. It hits him right in the hands. It's perfect. And Todd Pinkston had some problems early in this season coming down with some catches. He improved with that as the season progressed. He won't have a bigger drop than that one right there this season. Because that brings up a third down and 10. Empty backfield and the toss this time to Pinkston. But he'll be about uh, three yards shy of the first down. Mike Brown making the key defensive play. And David Akers will come on on the 35-yard line of the Bears. Hand off to Deuce Staley. And Staley getting back to the line of scrimmage. Damon Moore had an interception earlier in the game. And then the fumble. The Eagles uh, had a turnover as Donovan McNabb's interception return by Jerry Azuma for a touchdown. Putting pressure on the Bear defense again. A field goal here would make it a two score game. So there's no question this is a critical drive right here for the Bears to stop them, not only keep it out in the end zone, but keep them from scoring a field goal. Second down and 10, looking for a receiver being watched. By trailer and then Erlacher comes in and a big loss on the play back to the 43 yard line. That is the second time that the Bears have uh, nabbed McNabb. You know Donovan's been making plays all day long and buying himself some time and finding receivers but you got to know the situation in the ball game. They were in a position to where they only needed a few yards for field goal. Now by him taking this sack he knocks himself back to the 42 yard line they need a big gain here on third down to get themselves back into position and Donovan's got to know that and he's got to be able to throw the ball away he has been under pressure even though he's been sacked only twice he's been hurried countless times third down and this pass caught underneath by Staley and Deuce Staley driving his way inside the 30 yard line does not get out of bounds see they are five and three when trailing going into the fourth quarter they will start from the 33. Shane Matthews handing off to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas gets a yard in the play. And you got to go back, of course, to those back to back overtime wins down by 19 in the third quarter against the 49ers. Next week, trailed by 14 with less than two minutes to go before winning in overtime against Cleveland. But the crowd getting a. Uh, a little testy. Well, they're getting a little testy because they're, they they know it's a two possession game right now with under six minutes to play, and they want to see this Bear offense open things up and start throwing the ball down the field. Only 12 passes in the entire game so far. Second and seven. Matthews backed up. Hill Douglas goes after him, and. Uh, it is going to be an incompleted pass. Good pressure by Douglas, who had nearly 10 sacks to lead the Eagles this year. Blake Brockemeyer has done a good job all afternoon. This is really the first time that uh, that Hugh has gotten close for a sack, and a little bit of coverage involved there as Shane Matthews was forced to hold the ball. Yeah, and here's Marty Booker trying to, well, he finds a place. He thinks he needs to be getting the ball thrown to him, and you can see the frustration with him. And it's tough, you know, in Shane Matthews' defense, he's back there trying to find guys that are open, and he's getting pressured by Hugh Douglas. That's tough. Only two catches for Booker, who was out of the game for a while with an injured shoulder. Third down and seven. Empty backfield. Pressure coming on Matthews and his pass. And it's incomplete. Tipped and nearly intercepted by Brian Dawkins. Second and ten at the 36. Now they'll run it to Staley. Staley to the 39, gain of three. Erlacher making game. 
Bears using a timeout. Their first third down and seven. Deuce Staley of the carry. And he'll be short of the first down by two yards. Colvin and Holdman, the outside backers. And start trying to push this ball down the field, something that they have not done so far in this game. Well, James Allen, a good receiver as a back, lines up as the tailback on first down. And the Matthews dragged down by Hugh Douglas. And that is the second sack by the Eagles and the first by Douglas today. Well, James Allen was working that side, and he just goes out into the swing route. And you got Hugh Douglas at the bottom working against Blake Brockermeyer. He gets no help from James Allen. And as a result, Hugh Douglas goes right around him. That's a tough project there on Blake to try to hold him back. And this is a pass to Des White incomplete. So now it's third down and 19 for the Bears. Shotgun, empty backfield, back of the 12, and this pass is intercepted, and it's Rashard Cook, and he will go out of bounds. So the season slipping away for the Chicago Bears as Rashard Cook intercepts a Shane Matthews pass. That is the third turnover by the Bears. Second interception, Miller through the first. Well, I don't know that Shane Matthews is getting a whole lot of help here. They, the ball obviously not a good throw and no chance for Baxter to make the play. Richard Cook gets the interception, but when you come out and you don't come out balanced offensively against this Eagles team and you just try running the football and you don't really try to start throwing the football until you get behind and the defense knows that's what you have to do to get back into the ball game. That is tough duty for that offensive line and it's very difficult for a quarterback to sit in there with that kind of pass rush and find guys against a defense like the Eagles. Deuce Staley on the run to the 15 yard line and Staley getting down to the seven. It's a first down for the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, they took the six nothing lead early. The game went back and forth. Twice the Eagles had their lead shaved. Bears took a 14 13 lead and they have uh, been in control in the second half in this game and uh, headed for the NFC Championship game leading by nine. They really have and they responded very well after that interception by Jerry Azuma that gave them the lead when they were about to ready to take control. So uh, a, a tremendous job of the Eagles maintaining their composure at that point of the second half. First and goal at the seven yard line is Deuce Staley going outside and he is a knockdown. Second and goal at the five. Under three and a half to go. Quarterback draw and a touchdown for Donovan McNabb. And how sweet it must be for McNabb, who grew up in Dalton, in the south side of Chicago, and in his first start in Soldier Feeling in their stomachs. You're absolutely right. Shane Matthews on first down, and the pass caught by Des White. And he stays in bounds, cannot get out of bounds. You're right. You can't say, well, we won the division 13 and 3. We had a good year anyway. No, this is a team that expected more than what they got at the end. Well, everybody talks about getting into the tournament and playing, but ultimately there's going to be one team at the end of this year that's happy, and the rest of them are going to be disappointed. But that first loss for the Bears in the first game is extremely difficult, especially when you work so hard to get home field advantage or home field advantage in a first round bye and get into that divisional game. James Allen within a yard of the first down at the 41 yard line of the Eagles. And this pass is incomplete intended for James Allen. And so the Eagles were leading 13 to 7 at the half. Bears took a one point lead and, uh, and then in the second half. And that's been the thing you see there just the 11 play drive with the field goal but other than that some three and outs the two plays before the interception last time they have just not had any opportunity to get in any type of offensive rhythm this second half and uh, again the, the Philadelphia Eagles did a good job of maintaining their composure when they had the big interception for the touchdown by Jerry Azuma. Here's Allen diving to the 38 yard line. So uh, several three and outs several two plays and then the turnover as we wind down to the two minute warning the Bears will try to get off another play trailing by 16 points pass by Matthews is caught by David Terrell are going to be in this thing for the long haul in years to come no question about it two minute warning second down and three 
And there is the pass thrown out of bounds. And go back to draft day. You remember when the fans booed Donovan McNabb's selection? They wanted Ricky Williams. They got Donovan McNabb, who is the only first round pick left among the playoff teams when it all started in the NFC and delivering again his three best games with the three last games. So and I far. think it was interesting to hear Andy Reid talk about the fact that you know he's only in his second season as a starter and he's only going to continue to get better. So uh, I, I, as Troy pointed out this is a franchise that's really stabilized itself. It's got a lot of their key players signed uh, for the next three to four years. So this is just the beginning of good things and the plan that Pam Oliver talked to Andy Reid about definitely starting to take shape. David Terrell with the catch and a first down 140 to go and here is uh, Shane Matthews and uh, this pass batted down Derek Burgess and a fumble and it's recovered intercepted was thrown and tipped and picked off the ball was batted Carlos Evans looked like Landetta on the five yard line and no one will even bring up the fact that he whiffed on a punt against the Bears for the Giants and will run in the end zone take the safety with one second and now time has run out well a lot of uh, machinations going on guys just for those final seconds with a 16 point lead which ends up 14 but Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles have won their second playoff game Beating the Chicago Bears by a score of 33 to 19, and Andy Reid with a victory against his uh, former assistant coach mate at Green Bay, Dick Duron. And the Eagles have advanced to the championship game for the first time since 1981. They beat the Dallas Cowboys, went on to the Super Bowl, and lost to the Oakland Raiders. And Harold Carmichael played in that game, and so did Ron Jaworski under Dick Vermeil back then but the Bears are denied and will uh, have to settle for a division title and one and out you can just tell on the faces of the Eagles players and coaches that, that this is all business hey yeah we're happy that we won today but you can see exactly what they talked about after that Tampa Bay victory last week they know that their work is long from done right now and in their minds mentally they're getting ready to find out who they're going to play next week. That's exactly right Moose and uh, they came into this ball game as we talked about after visiting with them last night a very confident group. They, they were confident coming in they felt that they were going to win the game and you can tell by the reaction of these players that they're not surprised by the outcome in this they know that there's a bigger challenge for this club next week.